Can you hear me now? All right. Can you hear me now was actually a slogan. Some of you may remember from it's do you remember what year it was when it came out? 2002. And I remember seeing it for the very first time. And I'm like, "Hmm, that's that's pretty catchy." Right? That's pretty Nifty. But we would see this gentleman. And he would walk around with a cell phone and he'd say, can you hear me now? Good. Can you hear me now? Good. And, and he'd go all over the place and they would shoot him at various locations. And he would say, can you hear me now? And there, what followed that was, Good. Basically, that was a marketing scheme that Verizon wanted to be the best provider in terms of coverage in the entire country. However, it lasted for 11 years. They ran this program, they ran this advertising for 11 years, and then one day I switched the TV on And then he's with Sprint? What? What happened? Well, I'll let you Google that story later. uh, There are often times that we are just like that person. His name is Paul. We are just like Paul where we are praying and we're like, Lord, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? And if I ask you, how many of you have ever felt that your prayers did not pass the ceiling of your house? I would probably say, how many of you have ever felt that way? Most of you, if not all of you, would raise your hand. Or you have gotten to a point where you say, Lord, are you listening to my prayer? And what you may think is crickets is actually God answering you. But we are just too stubborn to want to succumb to God's wisdom. But I like this definition of of prayer. The opening of the heart to God as to a friend. It elevates us to God. Prayer doesn't bring God closer to us. It brings us closer to God. You see, there are two people outside of my family circle that I can call them at any moment, at any time. They'll pick up the phone and we can talk. And when I talk to him, or both of them are, are, are male, so when I talk to him, one of them, I can speak whatever it is that is on my mind. I can tell him, I can say, hey, man, I'm going through this. I need you to pray for me. Or, hey, I'm so frustrated with X, Y, and Z. What, you know, I feel like that's a dialogue between friends. When you're able to even say, man, I am so ticked off at you right now. Did you know it's okay to say that to God? Did you know it's okay for you to, man, Lord, really? I'm really upset with you right now. Right? At some point, we've been there. We've taken that frustration, we've taken those ideas and and we say, what in the world is happening here? So when we pray, I want to present to you a couple of things as as you begin the new year. One of the first things in, in, in the blessing of this is that when we pray, we need to feel our need of God. 
Why is that? Isaiah 44, 3, it says, I, I will pour out water upon the thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. Because he wants to bless you, he will only bless you when you recognize your need of him. Wait, are you saying that I don't really need to speak my needs to him? No, no, that's not the point. See, when we come to God with, with a need, he answers. But why would the ones who are not thirsty need water? Why would a parched earth, or why, why, why would a, a, a nicely fertilized, irrigated land need a flood? The implication is that when we realize we have a need for God and we ask him for that need, he will bless us. We also need to do it in faith. A prayer with, without faith goes nowhere. Hebrews 11.6 says, He that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There was a, a sense of urgency for, for Barbara wanting to get baptized today. There's a... And that's what it, the diligently seek is you need to have a sense of urgency of wanting to do God's bidding in your life. That is faith. Continually to move forward even when you don't see him. Why? Because that's what perseverance is about. Continuing to pray on behalf of of that request. Philippians 4, 6, and everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. See, we don't need to tell God because he already knows. We need to tell God because he wants us to tell him. He wants us to approach him. He wants us to be blessed by him. But we can only do that. He, he can only do that if we are searching diligently to him, for him. Right after communion or the Last Supper, after Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he had broken the bread, and he had poured the, the, the wine out for his disciples. They went out, and, and Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And there he prayed. And he prayed not only for his disciples, he prayed for you and he prayed for me. The Message Bible puts it this way. The goal is for them to become one heart and mind. It, he wasn't talking about just the disciples. We all know they weren't of one accord right there and then in that upper room. One of you are going to betray me. Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? I mean, they, didn't, they had no idea what was about to happen. They were not together. And so as Jesus is, in, in my holy imagination, he's hunched over that rock. You've probably all seen that same painting of Jesus just sprawling over a rock with this divine light over him. And he's got his hands folded and he's looking up. And you can put any tagline underneath that picture saying, Lord, not my, not you, not my will, but yours. At some point between that prayer... And his arrival is this one. 
where he's praying on behalf, not just the disciples, that they might be together. He's praying on behalf of those that would come after him, that they would be together. The goal is for them to become one heart and one mind. Unity is just as part of the message of communion as it is the death and resurrection of Christ. So this year, we're going to do something a little different starting today. My wife and I have been talking for a while. What can we do to foster unity within our church? Something that will be encouraging and something that will be practical, but yet everybody can be a part of. We started talking about it, and then she reminded me of something that was done in one of my friend's church. I kind of shrugged it off a little bit, and she was persistent. I want to invite her to come with me here. You all have seen her going around asking or giving out a little piece of paper, right? So I need a volunteer. Come on, Sue. All right. So before I put you to work, You can stand next to my lovely wife. Did everybody receive a number? Or has at least every family here has have they received a number? Have you? Anybody here who has not received one? I should. All right, Cyrus. Andrew? All right. Thanks. Back here. Anybody who else did not get one? A family, one per family, okay? So, you have all committed to this, not even knowing it. (laughs) Keep your hands raised so Andrew can see you, please, if you have not received that as a family. You have committed to this. Okay, you have committed to this. Here's the commitment. Before I tell you what that commitment is, I'm going to tell you what it is that you're going to be doing. So, one of the ways that we can do is we can pray for each other. That's the easiest thing, right? Empty. Thank you. Um, The easiest thing that we can do is pray for each other. It seems so simple. It seems so unattractive. It doesn't come with bells and whistles. As a matter of fact, God tells us to pray in the quiet of our own home or to go into a closet and pray. That is where the intimate prayer is, is prayed upon and listened and heard. So, we want to not only to pray for each other, but we want to bless each other. We're going to call this the blessing basket. Okay? My wife and I we have been praying over whoever it is is going to be receiving this. We don't know who it is. But here's, here's where you come in, Sue. You get to pick the lucky winner. All right. 
Who, which family member or family is number 33? Come on up. Right. Thank you. All right. So here's the other side to this. You guys are, will be taking this basket home. Everything inside that basket is for you. With the exception of a couple of things. Okay? There is a journal. Okay? It, it's heavy. Okay? It's heavy. So let me put it here. There is a journal here. This stays with the basket. So for those of you who don't know who this is, this is Bob and Barb. Barb. You all have the responsibility to pray for them this week. That is, okay? That is your responsibility. That text, okay, the goal is for, is for them to become one heart and one mind. This was the prayer of Jesus. This is the prayer that my wife and I have had for this church. This is the prayer I want you to pray for this church. This is the prayer I want you to pray for this couple. So why do you have, you get to be the very first ones to tell us the blessings you've received this week by writing in that journal. Okay? That stays there. This is just a reminder to be the light. Okay? So there's a little lighthouse. This stays with a basket. And a little reminder, so this is your number. A little reminder for us to count our blessings, okay, as you go through this week. And lastly, to help you in your personal daily devotionals, there is a Bible promise for every day of the week here. Now, all of that, with the exception of these four items, are yours. What needs to come back is the basket. You're going to be praying over whoever it is that you is going to receive next. Next Sabbath, this basket is going to go to another family. And so on and so forth. Yes. Part of, the, part of that blessing, you being, having received the blessing, you will be the blessing as well. So that basket also gets re, re, uh, repurposed and gets replenished. And without, with the exception of these four items, that they stay with the basket, and they're going to go throughout the entire church. That is the plan. That is the vision. Okay? So you guys are our first family to receive this blessing. My wife has a poem that she would like to share, and then we're going to pray over you, and then we're going to go off into com- our communion service. So I'm going to read something from um, Faye and Swearing. It's the power of prayer. Prayer is our anchor. When all hell breaks loose, we need no suffer the devil's abuse. Prayer sets our lukewarm spirits on fire. Prayer burns our carnal nature and all its desires. Prayer can lead us to a special place by guiding us with God's amazing grace. Prayer brings us hope, relief, and calm. Prayer is the best soothing balm. Prayer is the Christian's weapon to combat spiritual attacks. 
Prayer redeems the lost sheep back to the flock. Prayer here heals our wounds and relieves the hurt inside. Prayer brings us peace when it's daily applied. We must never lose heart. In prayer, we must persist. Then all our hearts and worries will be able to resist. Commit each day to pray a little more. So love and peace can reign on every shore. So God works when we pray. Things happen when we pray. Things change when we pray. Mountains can move when we pray. And most important, we change when we pray. So let's keep praying. So I invite you to pray with me over Barb, Barbara, and Bob. And as they receive this blessing, it is our responsibility to pray over them this week. And next week, they will bless another family. And so it will continue. Will you join me in prayer? Father in heaven, we are so grateful for this privilege of coming to you where you draw near us and your presence is felt amongst us. Lord, I thank you for this couple, for this family. May you continue to bless Bob and Barbara as they continue to grow, not just in, in their relationship with you, but also in their marriage. Lord, I pray that as they go through this week, that this church family will continue to lift them up. Lord, we don't know the personal struggles that are going, but you do. And we lift them up to you. We pray that you will bless them, that this family will be a blessing as well. And Lord, we thank you for everything you've done already and will continue to do. Thank you for how you've listened and you will answer our prayers on their behalf and on behalf of this church. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So part of the, uh, the process is, if you can't ha hold it, we can, <laughs> we can do it together. All right. <laughs> So, all right. Thank you, guys, and enjoy the basket. This, <laughs> if you haven't caught on, there is a theme that we're we're starting the year on, and that's the theme of prayer. A church that prays together, will stay together. For those of you that are embarking on the 40 days, your world will be rocked. And if you didn't get in for these 40 days, just wait till you hear the testimonies that are going to come out of that. But this is Jesus' goal for all of us, that we will become of one heart and one mind. May God bless you as we continue to pray for each other. May God bless you.